Hi, I'm Sarah Mason, founder of Infinite Music. As our summer Music Matters fundraising campaign winds down, I wanted to thank all our wonderful musicians and friends that participated. Their perspectives and music they shared with us each week was uplifting and a lot of fun. But I also wanted to thank those of you that donated to Infinite Music because it's your generosity that keeps our programs going at a time when our kids need it most. If you haven't donated, please know that every dollar you give goes directly to our musical cause. Whatever you can afford is so appreciated. And on that note, <laughs> I had the opportunity to talk recently with John Anderson, founding member of the band Yes. In our two-part interview, John shares his thoughts about his latest album, 1000 Hands, Chapter 1, and we discuss the impact music has played in his life. John is a fascinating person and, of course, a talented musician, and I'm so excited to share our conversation with you. Here's John Anderson. Enjoy. Get up and show me your life to be there, to be real, to, to do something together now. John Anderson, Sarah Mason, how are you? Hey there, Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I bet you are a Zoom expert. Well, I used to write Zoom on every email I did until a couple of years ago. I spent for 10 years, I would write Zoom, Zoom, John. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a brief background, or I didn't know how much you knew about Infinite Music, but it's a it's a nonprofit that I that I founded eight eight years ago, just kind of as my personal give back for music, all the music that I've um, had in my life, and I wanted to share with you that you um, were so uh, special at my. Infinite Music is kind of a tribute to my brother who I lost from um, ALS. He had a terminal illness, and but you gifted a nice photograph of yourself. He was a he was a favorite fan of Yes, and you wrote something so profound on it, and that meant a lot to him. And I don't know how I don't know how we got that. One of my other brothers spearheaded it, I guess, but that was, what really was his name. Robin, yes, with a Y, yeah. yeah. Right. But I really want to start in and and talk about um, your latest solo record 1000 hands Good. Chap chapter one and um i know this is an exciting and busy time for you with the release of that um and i was reading it's been 30 years in the making and i well, think this is your 15th you know, solo album yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> what took so long oh boy life takes life. over sometimes um very quickly i I was in touch with a friend of mine called Brian Chatton. Now, Brian joined my first band in 1966, can you imagine? And uh, we became friends forever. And he was in LA at the time, 1990, and I was there. And uh, so I was said, I'm, go I'm going up to Big Bear. I, I want to get away from LA, it's driving me crazy. So I, I rented a A-frame in Big Bear ski resort area. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came up with a couple of friends of mine and we started making music and uh, most of the compositions were written between me and Brian because I, he's a great keyboard player and uh, he wrote some really good music and I naturally uh, developed each piece and in, in a two month period mm -hmm. and uh, I started thinking uh, I would like to try and get different musicians to play on it because it was it was a very good uh, musical sort of structure. But I started thinking, uh, and I got in touch with Chris Squire, who was uh, the bass player from Yes, who started Yes with me, and Alan White. They were in LA, and uh, so I got them. I paid up a thousand bucks each to play on a couple of tracks. Well, because we had money from this group of people in Chicago to make the album. So that started the idea. Maybe I should ask other people to play on the record. And uh, I even wanted to get the Beach Boys to sing on it. So maybe chapter two, I'll get, I'll get them to sing on it. Because uh, 
the idea was really good. We were enjoying the music, but life happens. You know, I had to go on tour with Kitaro, a great uh, Japanese composer. I'd sang on his album and he invited me to go to a world tour. And I said, okay. And Bill, Brian Chatton was set already, he fell in love with this girl, as he does a lot. And, as it uh, happens. Yeah, always did when he, even when he was 16, you know, when he joined <laughs> the Warriors. Uh, but um, basically he was on tour with B.B. King for a while as well. So life takes over and I just put the tapes in my garage for safekeeping. These are big tapes, a big two inch uh, 24 track tapes. There's 10 of them. And they stayed there for 26 years. Oh my gosh. So, Cause you know, you get on with life and uh, I think about them now and again, but not really wondering what to do with them. And then this producer got in touch with me, Michael Franklin, who lives in Orlando. And he said, have you still got the tapes? from Big Bear. And I said, mm, yeah, they're in the garage. He said, well, send them to me. And what you have to do with these tapes, because they've been there for years, you have to bake them. So you put them in the oven wow. for, as, I don't know how long, an hour maybe. And then you, you can only play them once on a 24 track machine. And because the tapes will disintegrate, you see? So yes. they played them and went straight to computer. And uh, Michael Franklin sent me the, the, the rough mixes of the songs. And I was like, oh my gosh, they sound really good. Oh Which my really gosh. Very surprising. And uh, he had already got, um, I've mentioned the idea of adding musicians, you know, along the way. Uh, and he got in touch with Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull, who was an old right. friend of mine. And he, he played on a track and that started the ball rolling. And uh, because he's from Orlando, he has a studio there. Orlando's the beehive of uh, musicians who work at Universal <laughs> or Disney World or you know, around, around town. And so he just knew all these people. Incredible, incredible. Well, I was gonna, I was just gonna ask you that because it's an amazing collaboration of artists, and yes. and I know for me being a flautist, Ian Anderson was always well. He kept me playing my flute back yeah. in the seventies, but um, gosh, you've got your fellow Yes alumni on there, Steve Howe and Alan White and the late Chris yeah. Squire. I got um, them on in in nineteen ninety, but the last person to play on the record was Steve Howe, which was really kind of cool. Oh, that's very cool. For those that don't know, he, he passed away, what, five, five years ago? Chris Squire. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. Yeah. But, but, your, but your more recent sidekick, Jean-Luc Ponty, is on it? Yeah. Because um, you, cause you had done your last album, Better Late Than Never, with him? Very that true. Very okay. True. And Billy <laughs> Cobbin, and another personal favorite of mine, Chick Corea. My oh, gosh. Boy. Oh, my these, gosh. These guys... Uh, You're the creme de la creme of musicians. Yeah. Well, I saw, wow. I met Billy Cobham with my Vishnu Orchestra. Mm. When we, when Yes, were touring with the Kinks, we did about five shows with the Kinks, of all people. Wow. And uh, my Vishnu opened up the, the show in New York State University. And me and Chris standing there watching my Vishnu play was like transforming because they were an incredible band. And uh, I got to know Billy Cobham. And so I'd, I'd actually mentioned to Michael Franklin, you know, if you can get Billy Cobham. <laughs> so you just saying. And like you wow. say, you know, he got so many very talented people, some wonderful singers called Zap Mama from Belgium. Yes, yes. I'd, in and I'd, see, I'd seen them at the Kitaro show in LA in 91, 1991. And he fell in love with these wonderful women who could sing like crazy good. Harmonies and the and and what's amazing what what comes out. Well, oh boy. how how do you collaborate, John, with all of these wonderful musicians? Um, you know, I mean, that's got to be challenging. How how do, how do you get everyone to fit your vision for the album? Well, listen, it's 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 really up to Michael Franklin saying, you know, what what do you feel about? There's a track called Ramalama, mm -hmm. which I actually 
did all the vocals. I do it every other day. I, I love doing these chanting vocals. Mm -hmm. And I'd sent him a couple of tracks. And one was Ramalama, the other one was Where Does mm -hmm. Music Come From? And uh, wow. he said, what shall I put on this track? I said, well, you, the, the, when the chorus comes, put a banjo, like a, like a real mountain, mountain man sort of banjo, mm -hmm. <laughs> which he did. And then he actually went to China, which he does quite a lot. His wife's Chinese. And he was going to China, and he actually created all the music for that track, Ram Lama, on the way to China on his laptop. Oh my gosh. It's How do you samples, do that? Samples, you know? Amazing. Just amazing. Truly. Well, will you, it's, it's an incredible album, John. And I, you know, one of those tracks you just mentioned that's very rhythmic and, and, and to be very dance driven is where does the music come from? Where and, does music come from? <laughs> and your lyrics read inside, outside, forever. But yeah. as a musician, I, I mean, what, what does come first for you? Is it the melody or is it the lyrics? Everything. Everything. And, and every, everything and anything. It's like, uh, you know, the, what we're going through these days uh, with the pandemic and the, the changing of the, the world on mm -hmm. many levels. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, thought provoking, of course, as a musician. And lyrically, you're, you're trying to expand on it and think what's coming what what's what is the future and mm -hmm. what's coming this next period of time and i have just i have a great belief that there's a raising of consciousness is a very subtle thing mm -hmm. to raise consciousness of, of of the planet for the planet mother earth to be aware that we are aware that without mother earth we're not anything you know mm -hmm. and we've got to take care of mother earth first and foremost, and it's about time. This is a very slow, slow awakening, if you like. And the pandemic sort of makes us realize one thing, we're all connected around the world through the internet, it's unbelievable. We are, we are, yeah. aren't we? And that, you know, that piece, it, well, the whole album um, it exudes that. And I think I, I read that you said you, you, you're always dreaming and your best work is yet to come. And, you know, it's funny, I read an interesting factoid the other day that 40% of musicians um, hear music in their sleep. Do you, do you dream music? Do, all, does, the does, all the time. All the time. <laughs> of course you well, do. <laughs> well, you know, you, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate because uh, I learned a long time ago that the music of the trees, the birds and the bees, the earth makes a lot of music. And I listen very carefully. That, that, that comes out so much in, in, um, in this album. And, it's, and yeah. it's beautiful that way. And, and I think the other thing, your lyrics and your melodies. I mean, ever since I've heard John Anderson, and of course, <laughs> my brothers and I go back to um, Yes was playing in, in, on every turntable in every bedroom um, yeah. back then. But your lyrics and melodies are always so positive. And um, another great song on that album is Makes Me Happy. Yeah. Called Makes Me Happy. And, you know, you're, you're not singing the blues. So where, where does this positivity come from? No, I, I never had the blues. Well, I've had no. the blues, but not, the, not enough to sing about because there's so many good blues singers and they're so very good at it. Yeah. I, I was always, you, you know, I, I'm born John Roy Anderson. And mm -hmm. John Roy, I found out, a few years ago that I was named after a, a, an English music hall uh, character who would go on stage with a ukulele and he'd ask people to say something and he'd sing about it, you know? And it was called John Roy, the Melody Boy. And I thought, of course, ding, you know? I was meant to be a melody person. So that's where melodies, they just come very natural and uh, I don't, I don't get involved in them. <laughs> I don't think about it too much. It just, it just, it just comes. It's just there. Well, the yes, the time. Sorry, natural. It's a natural event. Very natural. I um, this this album, One Thousand Hands, is actually called Chapter One. One Thousand Hands, Chapter One. Does that mean 
this is just beginning, that there's well, more music coming. Yeah, but by the time we decided which track's gonna work, we had about four left over. And we thought, well, I think this is enough. If we add another four more songs that don't feel finished or, or right at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we have four extra songs and we wrote two or three more. I actually wrote one two, two weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. just doing my vocal chanting and I was I was uh, very very excited about a movie that's coming out next month it's called Kiss the Ground mm -hmm. and a friend of mine has been involved in it from the get-go and it's all these wonderful people around the world explaining the mother earth the, the ground the mother earth is is needing help and we very need to wake so. up and dream better and uh, I always say this, but I'll, I'll say it again, but you know, everything that we see um, around us now, you look around your, your lovely place where you are now and everything you see is from under the ground, mm -hmm. even us physically, you know? Our spirits are on, a, on another, another level of consciousness, but everything comes from under the ground. So if, if Mother Earth isn't taken care of, we're not gonna really evolve. And uh, the computer has come to help us. You know, I never get angry with my computer because you know, it's part of Mother Earth. So I, I say, I pray to my computer, please, please work better. So I don't do that, but I just subconsciously, and more, more or less the computer will actually help you oh, as a natural event, so. No, no, I don't no. Know I got to that point, but that's no, what I think. No crashing on us at, at, during this during this lovely chat.